In this video, we have a story about someone drinking acetone. Do not drink chemicals that are not intended for people to eat. Obviously, you shouldn't repeat any of the dangerous activities you see people doing in compilations. Hopefully that goes without saying, and I hope you enjoy the video. So I'd like to thank Bearcat Ben for taking screen caps of a lot of the messages that this person sent as this was unfolding. Many of these messages have since been deleted because they were encouraging users to repeat bad behavior. But Bearcat Ben uh, happened to take screenshots, so I just want to give him a big shout out. Drank 50 mils of acetone. Summarily, a very, very stupid thing to do. That is what he did. Who is he? He is Stryker. Just poured myself 50 mils of acetone. Wish me luck, lads. Reporting back. I don't feel many effects at the moment, other than mildly less tired, but that is off put by a sudden thunderous headache that is yet to cease. The gulp was extremely unpleasant. Newsflash, acetone tastes like shit. As it went down my esophagus, it felt as if I had swallowed liquid nitrogen. I assume it's due to the low boiling point of the material swallowed. I retched a few times but managed to keep it down. The aftertaste is sickeningly sweet. It is best chased with hot green tea, which my lab has basically on tap. I didn't realize that he was doing this in a lab that makes this even worse. I think perhaps it'd be tastier if it was diluted with water. So your body does make acetone and it does break it down, but this is not something safe to do. And the person who was doing this did not know what they were doing and they were encouraging people to repeat very bad behavior. Extremely based acetone drinker. I am in deep ketosis right now. I haven't had carbs in about six days. I wonder if I can extract acetone from my urine. If I recall correctly, acetone is marginally more toxic than alcohol. I think it takes like 200 milliliters of azeotropic acetone to get the oral LD50, meaning I could probably take a shot. And at Sandy Salamandy, no need. I have acetone test strips in the lab right now, provided I have not overhydrated myself. My face when I can probably make ammonium nitrate and peroxy acetone for my own piss. This is another really dangerous recommendation. I have not included any stories about TATP on the channel for this very reason. It is extremely reckless for people to be making TATP, triacetone, triperoxide. And so this is another red flag from this user, Spiker. But yeah, I drank plenty of water. Still stuck with me, alas. Absolute mad lad, I wouldn't dare to drench down pure alcohol, let alone acetone. I am sweating, I smell nothing but acetone. I'm also pissing a lot, but I've knocked out a lot of fucking paperwork and the headache has gone away mostly. Make no mistake, this is extremely unpleasant. It's like drinking a lot of bad, cheap bottom shelf rum. If I recall correctly, it turns partially into glucose and excess is pissed out, which I'm trying to do. I think I'm getting a confusion. I'm not sure what they mean by getting a confusion, but I don't imagine drinking 50 mils of acetone would be great for your brain either. I wouldn't be too keen on urination if ingestion felt like liquid nitrogen. What drives a person to do this experiment? I don't know. I don't think it's confusion, just general night shift sleepies. Overall, it's kind of like drinking bad liquor, except no alcohol metabolites. Is it safe to drink is what they asked. I believe so, but in high amounts it can be toxic. Why did you do this? Curiosity and getting paid to do nothing. What's the lethal dose of acetone? LD50 is around 200 milliliters. Minimum lethal dose is 100 milliliters. I'm actually pretty relaxed and focused right now. Slight intoxicating effect. I think the initial hit is what really fucked me up, but as I'm pissing it out and metabolizing it, I assume it's leaving me pretty okay. I could drink this with like a Sprite Sherbet Punch or something strong like that to complement the fruity flavor and probably actually enjoy the effects. I would like to say that I'm a paid professional and don't try this at home, but it is definitely better than Everclear. Yikes. At this point, for the last few pages, we've been at the next day. So this is the next day he's been going through this for a while. I am doing excellent currently, considering going in to get blood work to check for any underlying health effects, but otherwise I'm good. The oral LD50 for rats is 8.5 grams per kilogram actually, not milligrams, which means being around 90 kilograms. Assuming rats to human LD50 is 1 to 1, it would take over 500 grams of acetone for me to reach an oral LD50. I sincerely doubt that there's any quantifiable nerve damage. This isn't fucking toluene. According to the EPA, workers can be exposed to tons of chronic oral acetone before it's actually a problem. My esophagus did feel a bit dry, but this was solved with water. And here you can see the LD50 is 5.8 grams per kilogram, according to this MSDS sheet. And so someone sent this to a friend of theirs, someone who's a doctor, a friend of somebody in the Discord. So what he felt there as it went down was nerve damage. It can also lead to ketoacidosis, which is essentially where ketones like acetone overpower the buffer systems of the blood and make it abnormally acidic, which is generally not a good thing for one's health. Also, kidney and liver damage. It isn't necessarily acutely toxic, but in this dose, yeah. Also, if he poured himself double that dose, he'd probably be around the LD50 for acetone, aka statistically would have had a 50% chance to die. TLDR, this is even more stupid than the orange story. So this person ended up being okay afterwards. This isn't the type of behavior we want anybody to repeat at any point. 
but this was definitely an interesting story and I hope it was entertaining for you. Today's Yikes Awardee is Butterball. The worst chemical accident I ever had was when I was like 12. I was cleaning with LA Awesome Cleaner and had it all over my hands. For whatever reason, I decided to jerk off and got some LA Awesome on my dick. I still remember the burning sensation. <laughs> Wash your hands after you're working with any chemicals. Oh my gosh. Two stories. First, a fellow student of mine had overheard that some people would make chemistry cocktails after passing their dissertation using ethanol from their lab and whatever drink they had with them. So he and his friends decided to swipe a bottle of 95% ethanol and have drinks. He didn't realize until months later that the ethanol that they drank contained benzene as well. Benzene is super toxic and it's carcinogenic. That's awful. Second, my advisor for my REU program said that back when he was an undergrad, he was preparing some kind of air-free cuvette and the cuvette burst when he was adding nitrogen. He said a glass shard cut about a 6-inch gash up his hand and forearm, spilling acetonitrile and other chemicals into the wound. On top of that, he was doing another experiment a week or so after that, this time transferring methyl iodide into another container. He described it as looking like a bad infomercial where he accidentally poured the methyl iodide all over his hand and forearm, including the barely healed wound. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. He said that's why we should always wear lab coats. Yeah, no kidding. In this case, working with open wounds near chemicals is terrible, so it's really awful to hear that that happened. Then there was this time that a student turned on the gas for the Bunsen burners and left them on full blast after a lab because they got a bad grade, so the lab was full of gas. That was fun. This person literally tried to gas their lab with natural gas. That is super, super awful behavior. Yikes. Every time I think about how stupid some people can be with this stuff, I think about my mom's standard chemistry set story. One day, back when they still sold chemistry sets in stores, this was the 80s or 90s, one of the neighbor kids killed himself with one. He did this not by generating toxic gas or giving himself chemical burns or by creating an explosion, but by straight up drinking his experiment. Gotta wonder what went through his mind as he did it. People really aren't kidding when they say that every safety protocol is written with blood. This kind of reminds me of the stories about crocodile. So you always hear about this one opiate derivative called crocodile, and you see these pictures where people have lost their whole arm. The issue wasn't the drug that they were using, but rather they weren't injecting the pure drug. They were injecting themselves with crude reaction mixtures, which had elemental phosphorus in it. And so it led to limb degeneration, which is terrifying, right? You should not be drinking nor injecting or in any way coming in contact with crude reaction mixtures. That is a surefire way to fuck yourself up real bad. The first one reminded me of this survey that asked people a bunch of stuff, but one question asked if you sniff glue. Everyone was making fun of it, but people started sniffing glue out of sheer curiosity. It was definitely something. The most similar thing to this that I can recall is people who'd smell whiteout. I remember in high school, one of my friends would always take people's whiteout and smell it to get high. And it wasn't until I'd worked in the lab that I recognized the smell of whiteout as being distinctly cyclohexane, exactly cyclohexane. This might be some local variant of whiteout that has this as a solvent, but this is 100% cyclohexane in my experience. The next thing we have here is this hydrochloric acid lemonade. And so this is from a Japanese pharmacopoeia, and this is the recipe for hydrochloric acid lemonade. So the ingredients for hydrochloric acid lemonade are dilute hydrochloric acid, they don't give us a concentration, simple syrup, purified water or purified water in containers, a sufficient quantity to make 1000 milliliters. So they just mix up hydrochloric acid, simple syrup, and water to make their lemonade, and they describe it as being a clear, colorless liquid that has a sweet, cool acid taste. Now, I have not verified this, but I posted this on Twitter. Somebody responded that it isn't actually that dangerous because 36% hydrochloric acid is approximately 1 to 1,000 by volume, so it should be around a ballpark of pH 2. It has a slight tart acid taste, but completely neutral without other flavors. Not that intense taste, less tart than a lemon. And not only do they describe this, but they also have a video of them making it. So here's their big bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid. They have a beaker ready, and they're just pipetting out a small amount of the concentrated hydrochloric acid. Now, I'm not sure why anybody has a bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid just on their desk, like around all that other stuff. I would assume that that would cause stuff to rust. But uh, nonetheless, they make a small amount in a cup. You can see this is a scaled down version of the protocol. And there you go. There's their hydrochloric acid lemonade. Now, unfortunately, in the video, it doesn't show them drinking it, but uh, they did make it after all, so it's kind of entertaining. You might be a little bit concerned about this, but it's good to remind you that hydrochloric acid is in our stomach, so it's relatively safe. Maybe the concentration varies a little bit, but the stomach is really acidic, so it should be okay to drink like this too. It just might not be as great for your teeth. And soda has phosphoric acid in it, so just because there's an acid in it aside from an organic acid, some inorganic acids are okay. The Virgin West Chemist versus the Chad Indian Banana Alchemist. If you haven't checked out the toxic unripe banana water video, this is one of the first fun videos we did. And 
yeah, basically the concept of this video is that they were able to use unripe banana water to catalyze an acylation reaction of an aniline. So definitely a ridiculous paper. I originally recorded these videos only for Patreon, but the patrons unanimously decided that they wanted me to make these public so that everybody could watch them. These are the names of the people supporting during the month that this video was recorded, and if you'd like to have your name at the end of a future extreme compilation, you can support the channel on Patreon using the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.